innovation is something very dear to my heart, something I've been involved in professionally for a long time. It's been important in my studies, my PhD, and it's in my library. So let's have a look at what we mean here by there being three levels of innovation. First of all, there are things, innovations that are new to the world. Now, that's the highest level of innovation. It has the highest development cost, highest risk, which is important, and the longest time to market. Let's have a look. Highest level of innovation, it's effectively technical invention. New to the world, never seen anywhere by anybody. Uh, it could be technical innovation, but also business model innovation that's new to the world. The development costs are high because, well, it's new territory and there are unknown unknowns. Things happen that were not expected. That's because of the higher risk. What's important here is to note that there are two types of, at least two types of risk. There's the technical risk. When you're developing new technology, it might or might not work. It might or might not be feasible. And then there's the business risk. Even if it works technically, is there a market? Can we make it work in a profitable or manner or in a manner that creates a surplus of well-being? And because of these considerations, it is also <laughs> the longest time to market. This just even think about having to patent new drugs, for example, completely new things, adds extra time to the whole process. The second level of innovation is simply new to the market. Maybe it's been used somewhere else. Now we bring it to this market. The market can be of different types. It can be you know, geographical. It's the first time we've seen it in this country or in this city or in this region. It could be an industry. Maybe the innovation is used elsewhere and we bring it to another sector, to another market. Or it's new in terms of the benefit that it brings. For example, you know, cutting across uh, industrial and geographic boundaries, rearranging, unbundling and rearranging products into create something new, a different type of benefit from what was seen before. You can find success in frontier markets or in firms. It's a lower risk than the previous version, new to the world. Completely. It's only lower cost because it's been applied, found somewhere else. So what we're seeing here is an innovation that has been used in another market, geographic or whatever. So we go to the frontier market, see what works there and bring it to our market. It's been in another firm, we bring it to our market. So the risk is reduced, the innovation has been tested, the development costs have been incurred and Therefore, this is, suggests that maybe you know, the first mover advantage doesn't always matter, isn't always important. It can be useful to be an early second mover. So the first mover takes the risks, takes the costs, it might take all the benefits too. There's some trade-offs there. And also, even if this innovation has been used elsewhere, you can still be positioned as a leader in your market because it hasn't been seen here before, and therefore you could be the first. Like I said, it might be a geographic, it might be in your sector, but still you can be the leader. You define the market in many different ways. And the third, the lowest level, so to speak, is innovation that's new to the firm, new to us. We haven't done it before. Other people have done it, even in our market, but we haven't. So what we're doing here is adopting and maybe adapting what's been tried elsewhere. Still are exploring new territory because it's new for us. It's important to understand that there are risks for us. There are costs for us. We haven't done it before. You need to be careful when embarking in this journey. So you need to ask yourself, do you have the capabilities to develop this innovation? If you don't, you will need to invest. Do you want to invest in it? And finally, do you have the culture <laughs> to make it happen? It's not easy, 
bringing in innovations means you need to change the way you work, probably, change the way you interact with your customers, the stakeholders, and if the culture is well ingrained that makes it difficult to do this, then it will be difficult. We need to look at those potential impediments and make sure that we can either get around them or develop a culture that is open to innovations. Now, you can see some fairly general and repeated approaches to how innovations develop through time. So first it comes out, there's an early stage where everything is fairly fluid, it's not clear what the standard design is going to be, and over time you get maturity of standardization. You know, cars are fairly similar um, compared to, say, the very early cars that were developed. I'll just go into this in a bit more detail, for example. In the early stage, it can be many innovators, new products, new systems. The specs are unclear. It's not certain who will be at the forefront, who will be, what will be the dominant design. Um, the users are the forefront. Usually, typically, innovations occur at the interface between users and firms and producers. Okay. And because of this, there are short runs of production. When we reach a standardization, more mature stage uh, in the cycle, the changes, incre <laughs> changes are incremental. There you go. And we've got more consolidation of players from many innovators, many producers to very few producers. Well, for example, the car, automotive industry, accounting industry. And the improvements tend to be more at the process level rather than at the product. And it's the manufacturer that are innovating a bit more than, say, the users. And here, instead of having short runs, like you know, a few items produced until there's a, an important change again, we need to have economies of scale when you've got standardized products. So we can have long runs of production and get average costs down. Typically, have those bits of uh, sound coming through. In the early stages, we have high profit margins. At the later stages with standardization, the profit margins are lower, but uh, the, uh, the profits are made on the volume, on the quantity. So three levels of innovation, different levels of risk, different levels of opportunity, and important internal considerations to be made in organizing ourselves for them.